Hey, hey, what's up, Swim fans? Uh, my name is Jan Wolfgarten. I'm a former um, world class open water swimmer, winning international medals in both pool and open water swimming, um, training under some of the best coaches in the world and alongside some of the best athletes in the world. Um, I, I don't want to brag. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I, I'm, a, I'm an expert in the field, I know what I'm talking about and I'm very happy to share with you what has um, worked for me, what is working for my athletes right now and what um, like literally some of the best coaches that swimming has to offer have done in the training with me and the athletes who really succeeded during their time where I was in those programs. Okay. Without any further ado, let's jump into today's topic, which is negative splitting. Okay, negative splitting. Uh, let's first define what that is. Um, if you negative split a race, a distance, whatever, the second half is faster than the first. Okay, um, that's just for starters, so we get that out of the way. Um, it is very, very important for distance swimmers. If you want to win a distance event, you have to have a strong second half. If you don't have it, very very tough um, if you are a triathlete which most of you are you need a strong second half in order to uh, not fade away in order to stay with the field in open water those of you who are watching uh, the Ironman World Championships every year which again I assume most of you are um, probably have seen that the the pack tends to fall apart on the back half after they they pass the turning point and that's usually when people um, are losing the feet and the group separates. We don't want that to happen, so we need to prepare in training. Today I want to talk about three levels of negative splitting. Um, level number one, which everybody can do right away, is just doing long swims and really making sure that you have a faster second half than your first. So let's say you do an 800 pull, just in your next training session, check the watch at the 400 and try to be a little bit faster on the second half. Now, if you want to do that, that usually implies that you need to <laughs> that you need to take the first half a little bit easier than usual. Okay, it's otherwise you're going to have to push really, really hard. That's not necessarily the case. I mean, we can still do base um, base pace training, base heart rate training, and negative split. Just need to think about what you're doing, take it out just a little bit slower, and come home just a little bit faster. Doesn't need to be all out. Okay, that will help you always. It's something that you should be that that should become a habit of yours in training if you're a distance swimmer, and um, like I said, can be can be implemented tomorrow. Also gives you something to think about while you swim, so it's it's not as boring. Time goes by a little bit quicker. I really have honestly have a really hard time thinking about something that's not good about this. Okay, so do it, please. It's going to help you. Um, the second thing. <clears throat> um, this is more advanced because the, the, the set that I'm going to talk about is significantly more challenging. And I'm going to pick something like 2100s um, with about 20 to 30 seconds rest, but swam on a starting interval. So a classic set for um, competitive pool swimmers for distance guys is something like 2100s best average, where you try to have the best possible um, final time if you add all of those 100s together, which means you have to swim them pretty consistent, don't start too fast, finish strong, that kind of thing. Um, and you pick an interval that gives you around 25 to 30 seconds rest. So let's take one of those guys or girls or whatever, and we, we say this person swims 105, okay? Um, for distance guys, it's very, very important how you swim that 105. If you go out in 31.5 and you come home in 33.5, you are not doing this really well. Um, the reason being, this is a set that usually gives you very good feedback of where you're at regarding your 1500 meter race. If you come home in 33.5, that is what you should honestly um, consider to be your pace. It's not 105s, it's more like 107s because you're not really swimming a 105. The first 50 almost doesn't count. You get a clean push off. You have, since you rested 25 seconds, doesn't sound like much, but it makes a big difference. You, you have a little bit more air versus the second half. You don't get the clean push off. You're coming straight out of a flip turn. You're out of breath from the, from the first 50 and then coming home. That's really a lot more honest of a feedback for your 1500 meter pace. So if you go 105 with a 31.5 and 
you're not really a 105, 1500 meter uh, freestyle swimmer, you're probably more like a 107 average 1500 freestyle swimmer. Keep that in mind. So try to make these even. Maybe go like 32.3 and 32.7. That's still pretty good. Okay, very important. Also very important for you coaches out there. Don't just time the 100, time the 50s. Make sure that your athletes are even splitting or maybe negative splitting those, those 100s. Okay, cannot stress enough how important this is. I've seen a lot of people vastly overestimating how good they really are. They go to the meet, they say, man, hey, I swam 2100s on 130 and 105. I'm certainly going to go 1650, which is 105 pace in the 1500. And then they get the rude awakening when the time at the end of the day says like 1646.6 and they don't have any clue what went wrong. Don't be that person, okay? Make sure you um, even or negative split these kind of sets. And then level three, which is even more intense, um, are things like broken swims. Seen that countless times also. You have athletes um, who put a race suit on and then they go something like four times 100, on, even sometimes with a lot of rest, and the coaches add the, the times together and they think that this athlete is capable of swimming a 400 like that. Also, I think this is a very, very optimistic approach to, to the situation. If you want to calculate what your athlete might be able to do in the 400, again, don't just time the 100. Take a 50 split and add the four 50s on the way home together. Those four 50s give you 200 time, multiply that times two. I think then we are talking about something that this athlete can realistically um, accomplish in a 400 meter race. Again, I hate to break it to you, but it's it's so it's it's so good, and it gives you so much confidence if you if you know what you can expect when you go to a race. I, I always have this in the back of my mind with my athletes that I know this is probably something that they can do even on a on a on an average day, and that's that's really good because I can tell this to my athletes, and they they have more confidence when they when you go to the race and yeah, I think you could do the same. So always, doesn't matter if it's base pace, it's the first example we gave, come home faster than you go out or if it's some pretty intense threshold stuff, also come home faster than you come out or try to even split and measure yourself on the second half and also on your broken swims, don't just add the four 100s or whatever together. Take the second half, the half that you come home with, add that kind of stuff together and then you're gonna have a pretty good idea of where you're at and what you can expect and it's gonna make you a hell of a lot tougher for your race because you taught your body over and over and over again to have a strong back half of whatever race you're swimming. Okay, so this is something that you can implement basically tomorrow. I hope it's gonna help you out. It helped me out for sure. It helped out my athletes and um, yeah, all the best for your upcoming swims and see you in the next one. Bye.